In 2011, we had a son together, my first, her fourth. I was essentially living in Florida while keeping an apartment in downtown Chicago as I liquidated my business holdings to free myself up so I could be there. Neither her Florida home nor my apartment in Chicago were large enough for the six of us. We debated three ideas, find a bigger home in Florida, find a bigger home in Chicago, or move back to my hometown. My hometown was a much better environment for the older kids. Bye bye Chicago. My hometown, a little island near the city of Detroit with a population just under 10,000 people. It's called Gros Ile, meaning large island in French. She'd miss Florida and I would definitely miss the big city of Chicago where I'd lived for the last 20 years. A big city, but close enough to home so I could visit my aging parents frequently while maintaining many lifetime friendships. In 1918, my grandmother became one of the first women to graduate from the University of Michigan where she met my grandfather before making Grozeal their lifetime home. 25 years after that, World War II was in full swing. Grozeal's airport was a critical training base for pilots during the war. My father was among hundreds of young naval officers who trained on planes like the AT-6 Texan. These men would go on to fly fighter planes like the Hellcat and Wildcat, and most critically, the Douglas Dauntless dive bomber and Avenger torpedo bomber. In 1942, these were outdated planes, which nonetheless turned the tide of World War II in the Pacific in a five-minute span on the morning of June 4, 1942. The U.S. Navy caught the exponentially more powerful Japanese Navy off guard, ultimately sinking four enemy carriers and fending off the feared Japanese invasion of the west coast of the United States. Many of these men trained at Grozeal's naval base, and many never returned home. These were men of valor, willing to give up their lives for truth, honor, and the American way of life we cling to still. Barely, I might add, earning the well-deserved recognition as the greatest generation, according to Tom Brokaw. As was common, the young Grozeal aviator pictured here named his plane after his then-girlfriend Barbara. Several decades later, she would become the First Lady of the United States as the wife of President George H.W. Bush, who remained fond of this little-known island his entire life. Although my parents were 15 to 20 years older than those of my classmates, and the ideals taught to me often made, and seemingly still make life feel extra challenging at times, I thank God to this day I was raised by that generation. Words like honesty, integrity, and courage were taught to me while my dad told me stories of friends of his, also from Gross Hill, who lost their lives during the war. Growing up, we were taught to embrace truth and hate deceit. We were taught to stand up for what is right even if you're facing a more powerful foe. We were taught that God hates cowards. As Jesus Christ himself reiterated in about 90 AD in Revelation 21 8, emphasizing that cowards and liars will, quote, have their portion in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur. Now, I don't know exactly where that is or how all that works, but I do know that I don't want to go there. We were taught to love our country, but question its government, as our nation's founding fathers advised in countless historical documents. These fundamental ideas caused me to leave a lucrative business career and begin doing things I knew nothing about, like producing radio and TV programs and making movies like The Anatomy of a Great Deception, which clearly shows the official story fed by the American government to the American people about the events of 9-11 was a laughable joke. It doesn't seem like a good trade-off to exchange rich is for ridicule by the ignorant few whose freedoms you're literally trying to protect. But at least I sleep well at night. I say few because as of 2018, the majority of the United States population no longer believes the official story. The problem with those few is that they were never taught how to think for themselves and instead believe whatever the pretty face on TV tells them. Yet some ignorant fools cling to it, no matter how ridiculous. Today, our youth are taught about self-love, being your own god, and safe talk spaces where can go so your feelings don't get hurt. It's a long way to fall if our nation expects to remain free. Nonetheless, Grozeal's contribution during World War II is one of many things that makes me proud to have been raised on this little gem. Several generations of family received their primary education on Grozeal, like my father, like his son, and like his grandson who's a third grader in the same school I attended in third grade. It's a special place with rich family traditions for all who reside there. Grozeal provided a safer and more wholesome 
place for the older kids to finish high school. And once that happened, the plan was to relocate to Chicago with what would be our seven-year-old son by then. Gross Hill routinely ranks as the state's safest or sometimes the second safest city or place to live in the state of Michigan. Two bridges connect the island to the mainland, providing a humorous fable with some truth to it, shared by many residents who proudly state that if a crime is committed on Gross Hill, they simply raise or turn the bridges so the criminal can escape. In 2012, we bought a house in my hometown, consolidating a blended family, which included her three children from a prior marriage, whom I will always love, and the most recent addition, our one-year-old son. Six people embarking on a new life filled with hope and promise. Up to this point, everything was, by and large, a great experience, which should have been wonderful years and instead became a seven-year nightmare made up of lies, deceit, rumors, gossip, false claims, and frankly, the worst side of humanity. A seven-year nightmare which began to fade as work on the upcoming film Unsane started. The film tells the whole story and hopefully helps some of the estimated 30 to 50 million American people trapped in the situation I was in, and to a certain extent still am in. The movie also explains how to cope while getting out of it. Unsane is a how-to personal docudrama, if you will. How to overcome the covert, narcissistic, disordered person who's turning your life upside down by simply letting the truth come to light.